Hey, thanks for joining us today. Um, Aaron, it's been a long time since I saw you. Last time I think I saw you, you were uh, headed back down under um, on a plane, and now you're back, so good to see you. So jet um, lag is uh, slowly getting over the jet lag. Yeah. Uh, I have heard that sometimes you can drink, and I've got one around here, a monster to get over that. Um, no no uh, advertisement intended. But <laughs> What's the biggest reason you see companies go into Office 365? Cost. Um, you know, they, they have on-prem exchange servers that cost uh, in terms of hardware, mm -hmm. in terms of maintenance, You've got to patch those servers, need to make sure they're up and running. Uh, if I have downtime, maybe my exchange environment is poorly managed. If I have downtime, it impacts the entire business. Right. So they're moving to Office 365 to solve that challenge with on-prem exchange servers. Uh, it's also an office application licensing challenge as well. So I want to get away from, from having to have you know, continually, uh, uh, every three years, upgrade office and along, you know, the contracts that come along to actually have that licensing. I don't know about the accounting rules on where you're from, but I know enough about it in the United States. And I'm an it's IT confusing. guy. It's confusing. Yes, it's, no it is confusing. But I know when I used to go talk to my CFO, he would say, Dave, is this capital or is this expense? Yep. And I know with Office 365, the CFOs love the fact that it is an expense, not capital, yep. which means they get to write that off immediately as they spend the money versus having to amortize it over a certain amount of time. Yeah. Are you seeing the same thing on your customer oh, basis? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And and it's also moving you know, moving to a, a user-based consumption model. Mm -hmm. So where, you know, think about on-prem exchange and, and office, it's more of a device-based model, or you know, I go out and purchase that every three years, and it's a big expense. Amortize that over time, um, and and an organization that may shrink and grow as well, I can react a little right. bit more quick, quickly. Well, and you bring up a very interesting point that I want to make sure I point out. I think this is a maturation of IT, meaning yeah. you know. At first, like mail is hard to control, and we need to bring it in-house where we had control over the people that were going to work on it, right? I could tell them, you're not going home or you're not getting paid until it's fixed, and they would magically work on it. But now, you know, just like my cable, I don't know when the last time was I called my cable company and said my TV wasn't working, right? It's just always on. And yep. from an end-user perspective, we expect the same thing out of mail. And it's really neat to see what you know Microsoft and Google and other providers have done to be able to provide that mail experience 24-7. IT is no longer involved, which means from a company perspective, yep. I'm not paying five people to run around and fix exchange servers, manage you know storage equipment, et cetera, et cetera. So I can imagine there's a huge savings there from a customer perspective also. Yeah, and you know, things like what IT does to solve those storage problems, give mm -hmm. everyone a 500 meg mailbox, one gig mailbox. Mm -hmm. Moved to Office 365, I've got a 50 gig, 100 gig mailbox. And I can and call and get problem. more, did you know that? I actually really? did that the other day for Kevin, um, our CEO. <laughs> I got him a bigger mailbox. They, they oh. upped it to a terabyte. Wow. Lucky him, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, well, hey, it has been a pleasure. It's always good talking to you. Absolutely. Have a good day. Thanks.